Here's to whiskey kisses, the peachy taste of sin. Greetings, whiskey folk, and welcome to Drinking Out Loud. I am your host, Adam Bradshaw, and today is the official whiskey folk and bottling of Octomore 14.2 here at the Strath. All right. 14.2 has been nicknamed the impossible equation. Um, as someone that went to uh, university for mathematics, I found a few impossible equations, or impossible to me at least. Uh, so, was not expecting to see this. I'm very grateful that it's here. Um, this was released here in BC at uh, last year's Premium Spirit release, and we didn't think we were going to get any. And then a long time later, finally, it has arrived. Um, and I'm really happy that I get to share it with you guys. Uh, we got 14.1, 2, and 3. All three of which are still apparently listed as BCL exclusives, but oh, we got them. Um, yeah. And actually, I want to put some fake news to rest. Because fake news that I am ashamed to admit I propagated slightly. There were some articles floating around the whiskey web. Um, and that's the whiskey internet, not like Leon Webb, who uses whiskey web as his online name. Um, this the, There were some articles that uh, Brooklady was actually retiring the Octomore line. And that was actually a complete misunderstanding from a, um, a press statement that was put out saying that 14.4 uh, was the end of the Octomore series. But they were referring to the 14 Octomore series, not all of Octomore series. It was the last 14 point something. Uh, and that was a distillery exclusive that they uh, put out in like expeated casks, I think, as well. To make it extra peaty. Um, but yeah. If you're not familiar with Octomore, it is not a distillery. It is a line of whiskies made at Brookladdy Distillery. And it is uh, the peatiest of all whiskies. Uh, that is what they're going for here. Uh, there's been some eye-wateringly high numbers in the 200s. This one is a relatively sane 128.9 ppm. I say relatively sane. Most island whiskies are between 30 and 50. So this is still like four times the average, like, heavily peated whiskey. Madness. Of course, the PPM is of the barley, and, like, at the end of the day, a lot happens to the whiskey to bring that down. However, Octomore still plays into that. It's released at a relatively young age, uh, but a cast strength. Um, and uh, the point twos, recently at least, have tended to be where they experiment with other casks. And I love the point twos more than anything else, because they tend to be a little more balanced. As I've said before, I like heavy peat, but I like it when it's got something to latch onto. It's got something making it, you know, a little bit more balanced. Um, we had um, uh, an Octomore 8.2, I think it was, in the early Dram Association that we got uh, a lot of and at a really good price, and we sold a lot of it. Um, we gave it a funny nickname. Back in those days, we gave all the whiskeys nicknames, like the SWS does. It was um, the Iron Fist in the Velvet Glove, I think we called it. Um, it's uh, it was gorgeous, and I have high hopes that this will be the same. I haven't tried this yet. I haven't tried any of the fourteen series of Octomores yet, to be honest. Um, but let's let's go through the stats. So this is eight for five years. Um, and although it doesn't say on here, I, I did some research. Um, four of those years were in in two casks, and it was finished in a third. Um, and the cast types is in true style. It's got codes. So cast type. OLC, that's Oloroso cask, uh, AMC, Amarone cask, um, and then they were blended together and vatted for a final year uh, maturation together in a PAC, uh, Pauillac, uh, which is a, I think I'm pronouncing that right, I have no idea. It's a French Bordeaux uh, wine. Um, so yeah, wine finish after a mix of, well, Amarone's wine, but it's special wine, and uh, Oloroso. Um, barley origin is Scottish barley. So you might see that in some of their Port Charlotte and um, Brooklady releases. They have Isle of Barley releases and Scottish Barley releases. This is not from one of the Isle of Farms. That's the point three in this case. Uh, this is Scottish Barley, uh, and it's Concerto Barley as well. Uh, yeah, from the 2023 releases of Octomore, 14.2. 57.7% um, alcohol. Super heavily peated. Ooh, that's tight. Ooh, I'm going to break a nail. Oh, there we go. Whew. Love the big black long bottle. It's gorgeous, isn't it? They're opaque as well. Kind of, it's it's nice next to that sort of um, neutral, almost skin tone too. It's yeah, that's a very pleasant contrast of colours. That pitch black and like natural, so sort of slightly pinky. 
Oh, all right. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking for more information. I'm not going to get it. I've got all the information I think uh, we, we possibly need, apart from how the hell does it taste? Let's find out. Again, I've got the, the tight little foil on here that I'm always afraid is going to stab me under the nail. I need whiskey tweezers. That is that is a thing that I think we need to start marketing. Whiskey tweezers to be able to get these bloody things open. Ah, yeah, I got it. All right. Lovely. The reason I just looked at the tube is I noticed on the bottle it was a 700 mil. Uh, I thought it was a 750 on the tube, but I just misread it. 700. The, uh, this, the, the global standard. Not the American standard. The global standard. Oh. All right. That's, um... I've never wrapped a peach in bacon, but I understand the concept. <laughs> like, with a mandarin freshly squeezed over the top of it as well. That is super smoky bacon, but fruity. Fruity smoky. Mmm. Wow. It's not... And like I said, yeah, it's super heavily peated. What does it say? It's 100 and... 128.9 um, when the standard is like 30 to 40 to maybe 50. 55, I think, is Ardbeg. 45 is Laphroaig. 35 is like Kalila Lagavulin. Um, it's super heavily peated, the barley, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't come across like four times as peaty as Ardbeg. Like, well, I mean, it's not as like twice in a bit as peaty as Ardbeg, but it's still, it doesn't come across like that heavily peated. It's Heavily peated, but it's definitely not linear. You know, it's it's a little bit of an exponential, reverse exponential thing, right? Like the difference between twenty ppm and fifty ppm is way bigger than the difference between fifty ppm and eighty ppm, right? Oh. Wow. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Hmm. Um, we have a backyard pizza oven. It feels weird that I've talked about pizza twice in this recording session. I talked about a pineapple pizza earlier. Um, no, it's a, I have a backyard pizza oven. We do like, um, um, Neapolitan style pizza in. And we were experimenting with mortadella, which uh, turns out is a great pizza topping, but put it on afterwards um, because it then like sort of melts into the, you put it on as soon as the pizza comes out and it sort of melts into the, into the mozzarella. It's lovely. But we didn't know that the first time we tried it. We put it in the pizza oven and it just basically, I think it might have caught fire. Um, Th this tastes like that singed, crispy, burnt mortadella. <laughs> Which, honestly, was really good. Um, I don't know why we didn't do it again. It just felt wrong. Like, food, sh you shouldn't generally set your food on fire, I find, as a rule of thumb. That's not ideal most of the time. Oh, man. And now I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to set my uh, mortadella on fire. I have Octomore 14.2 to do that same job for me. Hmm. <laughs> Blimey, I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little water to this to see what happens because, like I said, it is 57. Was it? Is that right? Where's the ABV? I've lost it. <laughs> yeah, 57. 57.7% alcohol. It is five years old, so that makes sense. Yeah, a little little touch of water there. Hmm. All right. Oh yeah, it's it's calmed down. It now it smells more like the mortadella that's melted onto the mozzarella rather than caught fire now. It's still got that bizarrely like fruity pork thing going for it. Hmm. You know how like. The pig on the spit with the apple in the mouth is the, is the typical thing. This one's got a plum in the mouth. This one's... There's a... 
This pig's trying to be a bit different. Yeah, you can you can add a decent amount of water to this, and it it it, it doesn't thin it out as much as you'd expect. Uh, I would advise adding water to this, if only for the fact that you end up drinking more whiskey that way, because it. Yeah, I mean, diluting it like 30% with water only dilutes it 10% of the flavor. So you're, you're winning on that equation. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Pork berry. It's not quite as poetic as um, the Iron Fist in the Velvet Glove for the last Octomore that we did in the Dram Association, which is what our club whiskey folk used to be called. Um, but yeah, pork berry, I think, is what I would call this one if I was to give it the old nicknames that we used to do. Ha. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm on board with that. That is lovely. That is delightful. And once again, Octomore is telling me why it's perfectly okay to have a premium priced five year old whiskey. Age is not everything when it comes to whiskey production. There is so much more that goes into it. And they're not afraid to tell you it's five years old, but they will show you why that's okay. And mm, good on. I look forward to the 15 series, and I'm especially relieved to find out that the 15 series is still planning to go ahead this year. Um, and the 14 wasn't actually the last of the Octomores. And I'm sorry to the couple of people who may have bought a bottle of Octomore because I told them that I thought it was the last in the series. Fake news, guys. Uh, don't fall for it. Don't do not do what I did. Don't be a sucker. All right, so you can buy this right now. Um, if there's any left after the tasting, and that is, um, it is online at strathlicker.com or in store, of course. Two eighty nine forty eight is the standard price, which means that you can get it for two sixty fifty three with the ten percent off discount that all whiskey folk members get because this is a featured whiskey, and I would be an idiot if I didn't mention the fact that at two sixty fifty three, um, that is the best price I could find in Canada, um, like way better than it was at the premium spirit release at the government stores and better than anywhere I could find in Alberta. Um, that is an absolute bargain for this whiskey, and uh, yeah, pick it up while you can, because like all Octomores, it's a limited edition. Once it's gone, it's gone. But thankfully, there will be more <laughs> additions. Uh, all right. Thank you for joining me here on Drinking Out Loud. If you like what uh, um, uh, what you saw here today, please, um, if you're ever in Victoria, drop by the Strath. Ask for me. My name's Adam. Ask for me. I would love to meet you in person. The internet's great, but in person's better. Uh, but if you can't make it into the store for a chat... Drop us a comment in the comments section. Let us know where you're watching from. And uh, yeah, if you if you want to watch more videos like this, give us a like, give us a subscribe. We always appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Slanchava, stay well.